Okay, and this week, this is an epic news week for Python on hardware. Blinka, 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 um, blinka, blinka. We're actually getting some scoops and some breaking news in the world of, of Python on hardware now, too. Um, sometimes we make the news and our news, and other times we're just reporting on the news. So let's start off with um, some big Code Plus community circuit Python news. Code Academy plus circuit Python. If you want to learn Circuit Python. There is now a long online course, and they're really good at teaching Python. So this is actually a yeah. good mix. You can learn Python at Code Academy, and then Circuit Python. So you can like, yep. even if you don't know how to code at all, this is like the place to go to learn how to code. And uh, a couple things about it. Um, one, folks are already talking about it. This is very cool to see Circuit Python. Great uh, intro framework as well. What a lovely collaboration. And that's from Noobcat. High praise. And then um, even people in the MicroPython community, this is awesome news. Congrats to all the folks working on CircuitPython over at Adafruit. Your hard work is paying off. It's from Matt, who does a lot of MicroPython stuff. And uh, one thing, if you didn't know about Code Academy, they have helped over 45 million people around the world upgrade their careers with technology schools. The company's online interactive learning platform is widely recognized for providing accessible, flexible, and engaging experience for beginners and experienced programmers alike. So this is a big deal for us because this is the first time there's a course like this. Um, it's why we're celebrating it all week, and you'll see it all throughout the month. And we'll probably be stopping by the Code Academy offices, which are in New York, and we'll probably have them here. So we're going to be doing lots of stuff. So if you haven't already, please check it out. And it's a great course. And again, you don't know how to code. A lot of our, you know, we, we teach you how to build stuff, but we don't really teach you how to code that much. Code yeah. Academy is the place to go to learn how to code. Okay. Next up, in the wonderful world of calculators running. Oh, man. Um, calculators. Python. So there's this... French textbook that has like, here's the things that you have to learn, here's the products that are doing it. And since Python is the national language of France, this particular catalog, you have to check out the notes that I have, um, has um, all the calculators, in particular, the Texas Instruments um, one, which runs TI Python, which is CircuitPython. So do check that out, that's a neat chart. It has the TI-83 Premium, the Casio um, Graph, I think 90E, the HP Prime, and then NumWorks, all um, Python running calculators, including CircuitPython. Speaking of CircuitPython and MicroPython, Micro yeah. and celebrating anniversaries. Um, when did MicroPython uh, start? By well, the there was debate about that. Instead of debating about it, I just emailed the creator, Damien. So, what do you say? April 29th, 2013, the first line of code written in private before anyone knew about it, before it was even called MicroPython. So that's the birthday. Wow. That's what we went with. It's going to be six years old, April 29th. September 17th, 2013. First code running on a microcontroller on the very first prototype of the Pi board. Ooh. October 2nd, 2013. Registered MicroPython.org. October 4th, 2013. First commit, which is now the main repo. Late December 2013. Source code up on GitHub. June 21st, 2014. Last of the Kickstarter rewards sent out for the first Kickstarter. Wow, it's been like five years. It's amazing. Six years. Six years. Yeah. Well, since the, the, um, yeah. the Kickstarter was okay. a year later. More. These are all the, this is all the, the this news. Is this is also breaking news. Yeah. Well, the EV3 is, EV3 is a little older, but people do, do know it. So, um, MicroPython for Lego Mindstorms EV3 is here. It's a Visual Studio extension for programming the Lego Mindstorms. You can go to marketplace.visualstudio.com. Um, as of 4.14, there was 181 downloads. Let me see what it is up to now. Boop, 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 boop. Where are you looking up stuff live? I keep track of it. 441 downloads. So I like to keep track of stuff like this because it's like, oh, what's the rate of adoption? Yeah. And things like that. And there's like crazy, you know, one thing, there is like crazy intense Lego sites. So there's like unboxing Lego and like what Lego, Lego fan and Lego brick fan. party. And yeah, brick party is one. So this mm. is the new Lego Spike Prime. And someone leaked the data sheet. It's like a simplified version of the EV3. They're kind of bringing it back yeah. to the more. Especially, we, you know, we did the whole article about the cricket, about the origins. Well, of this with the cricket board. The the data this sheet got leaked, and then it quickly went away. So I downloaded it because I'm now in this like secret Lego community. And uh, one of the things it said was MicroPython operating system. So here's what here's we don't know. Here's another interesting thing. They have a five by five LED matrix, a lot like the micro bit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so what do you not know? Well, here's what we don't know. Is it MicroPython on bare metal, or is it MicroPython for Linux, which is probably it, and it's just running on, like, a Linux computer? I think it's Linux. We'll see. But we'll I see. think, well, I don't know. We, we don't know. We, we don't know. Well, we don't know. We don't know. The EV3, that is um, 
A Linux computer, so yeah. that's what it is. Okay, so we can make educated one. guesses, but until we see the hardware, we don't know for sure. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So more Python and more places. Okay. Speaking of calculators, this is NumWorks, and you can run an emulator on it. I thought this was so cool. I found this by accident because I was looking for something else. And yeah, there's people who are writing emulators for calculators. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're working on some game platforms ourselves. But what's neat is to see is like the expectation is if you're going to have a calculator that runs Python, it's probably going to be fast enough to be a game emulator too, which is really good for kids of all ages. Okay. Fun. We are getting close to release candidate for CircuitPython 4. We have a bunch of things about CircuitPython 4 that are going to be added. The latest beta, um, there's new support for pixel-based displays, display, display I.O., a port for the Nordic NRF-52840 microcontroller, including support for BLE beacon or peripheral, USB MIDI support, and messages translated to multiple languages. Um, in addition to all this neat stuff, um, this was uh, a video that Scott posted, and you can uh, hear some of the cool things that you can do with MIDI and with CircuitPython, and of course, Lady Ada showed off this um, Game Boy. That was probably the one that was in that, that photo. I right? think that's one on the right. Yeah. Next up, here is um, a video from a professor who made a Pi Portal for all the classes. This is a very cool hypercard like thing. And this is on the outside door, Professor John Gallagher. And uh, he teaches a lot of electronics yeah, and yeah. business innovation stuff. So this is very. I thought this was neat. This is handy. And this is at Boston College, which is yeah. near where I grew up. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, this is Tides on Pi Portal. This is Carter's project. It's epic. He actually did it two ways. One, there's this one first version that shows the high and low tides, and he also made a graphing element, and it actually graphs the tides over the day, so you can tell when it's going to be the highest and the lowest, and also like yeah. the rate of change. Really nice project from Carter on taking the pipe portal to the next level. And because like you know, air quality is more important than ever because sometimes the air quality ain't so great. There is a air quality pipe portal project. A bicycle powered circuit Python circuit playground board. Blitz over at Liz City is um, working on this cool project. She got her boards in, and this is an IR remote for circuit Python to control a cricket bot. This is the IR camera, um, and this is detecting, I think, the temperature of frozen meat. <laughs> yeah, you can see the blue, blue blob is the meat. Yeah. This is. Um, it's like a ukulele, right? Yeah, but it's like it, a hacked ukulele. Yeah, and you can you can control this uh, on this particular instrument, and you can use Python. Um, this was uh, some of the coming soon for Celeste on this is, High Badge, our this upcoming is the, gaming platform. Yeah, this is showing the Pico 8 cartridge, like the raw data being parsed from the cartridge. You can see all the icons, and at the bottom you can see the data. Yeah, I think it's what. I think that's what it is. First, yeah. top half is icons and second half is data. And then um, my headlines are getting easier to write. Circuit Python snicks its way to insert platform. Game Bueno. Um, the Game Bueno folks are porting Circuit Python to over one of their devices. They tell us in a couple of weeks they're going to have it up on GitHub. And uh, we hope to be stocking this device soon because it's yet another Circuit Python powered device. Deshi Poo did a really cool image of all the different ways that you can make games on Circuit Python. Python, Circuit Python and MicroPython? Boards. Yeah, you got OLEDs and Halloween Wings and the Pi Badge and Pew Pew. Including Tripwire, which is a little Lady Ada that battles Sparky. I know. I'm scared. I think this is like vacuum hackers. Yeah. And then um, we, we've talked about this and showed this, but this is some of the latest and uh, some of the variants of uh, Pi Badge. Not only did we post up the the PCBs, but we also posted up the uh, photos of the images of the PCBs, but also schematic. We have the Grand Central. We'll be talking about that in our new product section. Um, and then there's some more um, Circuit Python running boards. Um, the Hackaday um, contest is happening. So a lot of people are posting up their, their Hackaday I.O. for the Hack Hackaday Prize stuff up. Um, this is a single board multi-core school robot. And then this one is, I'm trying to remember. I think it was a home automation. Yeah, Circuit it looks Python like a 
uh, relay yeah, controller. Yeah, 16 channel smart home PLC. And then this is a um, 751 Sam D51 J19 CPU board running certified. Okay, we found this on GitHub. It's kind of cute. It's kind of like a squished Metro. Yeah, and then this is a um, watch from the badge badge hacking. These are all the badge hacking, and I think the badge stuff you can go to badge.team and has a bunch of MicroPython. This libraries. is like a like component tester. I think it's not. I think it's an Arduino. I don't think it's a MicroPython, but it might yeah. be. But it's a little smartwatch. Um, this is a Python powered um, etch a sketch camera that uses you snap a photo and then it draws it out with a Raspberry Pi in Python. Have some um, made with Moo news. Code with Moo. Made with Moo. Um, this is really neat. The next version, this is beta of Moo, sneak preview, and I'm going to play no. a video. There is a web mode, and you can make your own little websites. And one oh. of the things I'm really excited about is I think kids will probably be able to, once again, return to making their own websites. Because it, it was popular, and then it went away. And then it kind of came back. Because there's GeoCities. Sure. Angel Fire. Yeah. And that went away, and then people did MySpace. Yeah. That but that's went someone away. else's. It's, it, it, but it was like, these are other Not people's platforms. Yeah. And I think like being, being able to build your own website is an important thing. And so here's, here's a video that um, Entel Nicholas made about this web version where you can make your own websites. Okay. So this is a very quick demonstration of a first draft of a web development mode in Mew. So let's just start Mew. Um, this is a regular Mew. It's in Python 3 mode. Uh, if I click on the modes, though, we'll see that, hey, there's a new mode here. Um, so uh, what I can do is uh, load some code that I've already um, created earlier. Uh, this is the default code that you get when you create a new um, web application with this mode. Uh, how that happens is yet to be decided, but it's here already. Uh, I'm using the Bottle web framework um, for Python. And essentially, what you do is you have your web, um, web application definition of a route to an endpoint, which is just the home page here. And what does that do? Well, it renders a template called index um, and then the rest of it is general kind of housekeeping really uh, if i want to actually serve web pages from my local machine i click the run button and the web server has started and if i click the browse button i get to see uh, the default page for a web application created with mu and it's at this point that learners start to work with templates or add new endpoints to their web application so that they can create a very simple dynamic web app. Um, so let's just uh, stop that. Um, of course there are shortcuts to things like uh, where I've kept my templates, um, where I keep my CSS and of course the images that I might use. Oh, it's all gone mad. The images I might use um, in my web application. And so far that's it. Um, but it's nice and simple, um, and it's coming soon. Okay, Edublox is doing some new branding. You can see the top logo and then the bottom logo, and they're putting in all sorts of things. CircuitPython is included with this, so do check out Edublox. Um, it's probably one of the uh, easiest ways to do Python in a block format, and you can switch back and forth between the two. Okay, PyCon's coming up. We're counting down the hours almost because it's May 1st to May 9th. Digikey and Adafruit are teaming up. We have these boards, and I've been showing a rendering of it forever, but, but they are here. They are here. We are about to program about 4,000 of these, and uh, here it is. It's real. Um, included on this is a bunch of cool stuff for the workshops, demos, even some surprises, book, yeah. and more. Um, the team will be there. Dan, Katney, Scott, Brent, Brian, Sh Melissa, uh, Melissa, and I think I think I got to I think I got everybody. Um, they'll be there. They'll do sprints, workshops, and more um, to check it out. Other things going on in the world of Python. Like I said, there's a lot of news this week. I know. Um, there's a call for proposals for PyCon Australia. Um, check it out. The link is in the newsletter. If you haven't signed up for the Python so Software Foundation newsletter there's just a lot of interesting things about python and how a foundation is run so um, if you're like me and you keep an eye on things in the world of python 
um, they have a newsletter now, and there's no better source. And uh, it's hard to find stuff on the web. I kind of like newsletters now, personally. Um, help Wanted. Um, we'll talk about our jobs board later, but we do have some Help Wanted things that we are looking for from people. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're always looking for we're, we're, yeah, people. Yeah, we're, we're looking for things right now. Yeah, what are we looking for? Well, one, um, I'll have some more information up, but get ready. If you like single board computing and Linux, we need more help testing to make sure that Blinka runs on it. So I'm going to have a special section of circuitpython.org. We'll have boards, and then we just need people to verify and make sure it works, and then we'll add the board. It's not even that hard. I made it pretty easy, but yeah. I just am not an expert at every single board computer. We did a couple, but there's like 50. Yeah, and and Tux and Blink are getting along well, so you can yeah, I'm best help friends. keep that going on. Um, we also need help for translations of CircuitPython. If you speak another language, write another language, check out what languages we are reporting it to. Um, also on the code side, looking for sleep and power and battery optimizations, and then we're also looking for pinout diagrams. So we'll do a post, but if you're into all those things, let us know on Discord. Um, we keep track of all this in awesome CircuitPython. We have updates and more on circuitpython.org. We linked to and we render in awesome-circuitpython, which is on GitHub. It makes things easier to, to find. Mark and then, down. And then this weekend, we added boards. There's over 53 boards right now. That's that right. Circuit Python. And they're not all Adafruit boards. There's actually no. a lot of boards. It's it's heading towards 25, 30% of them yep. are from the community. We're, com we're fine. Other companies. We're fine with there being more non Adafruit boards. Actually, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. I would love it if there was more totally boards fine. not from Adafruit because then it won't be just on me to make cool new Circuit Python boards. Yeah. So, um, we're also not going to get to everything. For example, Space. We're not, we're not going to make a board that runs Circuit Python that goes to space. However, Max did. Yeah. And now Blink is in space. Um, this is a board. You can go to the overhead real quick. Yeah. Um, this is uh, one of the boards that we added, and uh, Max sent us one. Here it is. Cool. This goes to space. It's got like a tether wire. Yep. And if you want to have your board appear nicely in the CircuitPythons.org site and have downloads automatically generated and all these rendered things, and it's so beautiful mm. and wonderful, all you have to do is submit a pull request to CircuitPython. It's free. Uh, the code's all open source. Submit a pull request with your board definition, and it'll automatically populate. And you'll automatically get builds, and you'll get the latest code for your. You'll get the latest builds for your board for every update, which is really great for you. You don't have to worry about compiling and keeping up to date. We'll do, do that for you. All right, and last but not least, um, we have a Circuit Python style guide for Blinka. If people want to use the logo, we're cool with it. We just show you what's okay, and what's not okay. That'll be up on the circuitpython.org site. It's also in the art job box folder, and we'll have it in other places shortly. All that and more in the weekly newsletter, Whew. in case you missed it, the videos that we post, it is a CircuitPython world. We're just living, just in living it. it. Okay. Epic week. Woo! All right.